Okay, so we're starting out with uh, Operation Barbarossa, which was the German invasion of the Soviet Union in the summer of 1941. The ultimate goal for Operation Barbarossa was to knock the Soviet Union out of the war and to provide additional living room Lebensraum for the uh, Germans to the east. The original launch date for Operation Barbarossa was delayed by you know six to eight weeks because of the failed Italian invasion of Greece at the beginning of 1941 and the need for the Germans to inter intervene in that conflict, divert troops that were otherwise going to be used for Operation Barbarossa to the invasion of Yugoslavia and Greece, and then the the stabilization of that conquered area. What I'm going to do is go through this as the Axis player, the Soviets are going to be played by the computer, and we're going to move through it turn by turn. The initial invasion occurred uh, the week of the 22nd of June 1941, and proceed. And this game is a 40, uh, 40 game turn, or 40 turn game, and uh, we'll move through until there's victory, defeat, or draw. So let's begin. The gameplay here is uh, the Operational Art of War. I've been playing Operational Art of War for several years. Um, it's sometimes a little bit quirky. Um, can be extremely uh, complicated to play and conversely you could end up with it kind of being a, a very easy to, uh, to navigate. It really depends on how detailed you want you want to be on the uh, on the on the the order of battle itself. I tend to focus, you know, when you've got a large gameplay like this, tend to focus kind of, in this particular case, east to west, and then north to south. You can see, you know, if this isn't even got the entire, um, the entire map on it. It runs over to the Urals on this side, uh, German uh, Poland on that side, down all the way to uh, the Ukraine at the bottom. So you've got a lot of you've got a lot of uh, area to cover and a number of uh, troops participating on the Axis side. You have uh, the Romanians, the Bulgarians, the Italians, their Spanish troops as well as predominant German troops. Uh, you've got some Slovakian and Hungarian troops as well. So we're gonna... start... up at the north. And if you haven't, if you're not familiar with uh, Operational Art of War, it's a... Um, sequential turn game and each of the elements of the game can be controlled by the computer or by um, the individual player. In this particular case where you see these in orange that means that we're not able to utilize those troops as turns. So these are the finished troops that we're not able to utilize most of these finished troops this turn. Um, they're locked down and you can see um, the status of the troops up here. So how well how well they're set up with uh, with supply, what their um, what their uh, this is the this is the Air Force uh, section. I tend to allow the air commander um, to handle the Air Force pieces unless I've got some specific um, things necessary. Otherwise, I let the game, the computer handle uh, airplay, and I uh, focus on uh, ground troops. Again, you've got up here one 
um, one unit that we can move, which is this uh, German tank battalion. The Germans are shown in gray. I'm going to move this one uh, over to the front. And you can see here, you can move it as a single unit group movement or abort your decision. I'm going to move this. over to the uh, over to that spot and have that ready to go for when the Finnans uh, enter the war. So now we'll transition down to the northern section of the Eastern Front. This is going to be um, the area that Germany took over um, this is East Prussia, which was um, retained by Germany after World War II. Danzig and was uh, captured during uh, the opening days of the war in 1939. And then you've got um, occupied Poland, which was split as part of the molotov ribbentrop Pact um, in 1939. And the Russians actually, the Soviets actually invaded Poland from the, from the east while the Germans invaded from the west and Poland uh, ceased to exist. It was a shock to Stalin um, when the Germans invaded. Uh, he had gone through a significant purge of his army. A lot of his generals were no longer, uh, no longer alive. And um, our goal at the, at the initial, uh, in the initial few days or a few turns of, of the war here are to move uh, move rapidly to um, surround and capture Leningrad to surround the Russian troops that are at the frontier and isolate and cut them off while moving forward to capture the line here essentially running you can see um, you can see these lines here. We'd like to try and reach these lines no later than the uh, than the end of July, with the goal of capturing Moscow before winter. And in the first couple weeks of the war, um, you know, by the mid July, we'd like to be able to capture Minsk, and then moving to the southern section of the front. Um, we know we've got a kind of a tie down here in the pure cut marshes. So ideally we're going to utilize armored troops to go around. We'll run infantry free um, to clear the marshes. Um, and that'll be part of our capture of Minsk is essentially a pincer movement going this way. And then moving to the south, we'll move um, to tr attempt to capture Kiev uh, by the beginning of August. Uh, and then move on to Kursk. The goal on the southern front is to occupy the bulk of the Ukraine and take ourselves up to the Dnieper River uh, by the end of August. So we've captured essentially um, these key elements of Soviet uh, resistance and then position ourselves well for um, a follow-on offensive driving to attempt to capture, focusing on the capture of uh, Moscow before winter. So we're going to start back, um, start back up here. We already moved our one German tank battalion um, into position on the Finnish frontier. And the Finns will come into the war at some point. Um, the Finns and Russians have been fighting continuously really since 1939. The Finns have been getting aid from uh, from the Western Allies, they actually flew a number of American Buffalo fighters, um, and have have essentially um, been receiving Allied aid for a number of years, um, fighting the Russians. The Russians, remember, because of that Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, were viewed as allies to the to the uh, Germans, and the Finns have been fighting them since 1939 uh, through 1940, the Winter War and had lost some territory and are looking to regain that. So we're going to start up here um, with moving these troops um, 
What I want to try and do is bypass as much as possible and drive as deep as possible into uh, into the Russian or into the, the Baltic uh, Baltic states and drive up to uh, Leningrad before he's able before the Soviets are able to reinforce. So some of these uh, regiments, NKVD regiments and border uh, regiments, we're going to utilize some of our stronger um, divisions to just bypass um, and move as quickly as we can through um, through the Soviet uh, space and, and attempt to cut, the, cut them off from supply and then utilize uh, these MP regiments and some of the, the lesser strength um, uh, German troops to uh, to cut off or to destroy the isolated uh, Russians. So I'm going to move these single unit at a time. Um, and what you will end up seeing in in the operational art of war is you know as you're moving, a couple things occur. One, uh, other units are revealed, so only the units right in front of you tend to be um, shown. Other units are revealed, and so as, as this division kind of rolled through, you can see that there was some artillery um, and infantry here, and you can see kind of what the combat planner would look like for, uh, for an attack at that particular location. I don't use a combat planner all that often. I tend to allow the, uh, the default um, to, to uh, utilize the combat planner. Um, in a lot of cases, when you've got an overwhelming force, so you've got an SS motorized infantry unit here, you're able to just kind of knock these guys out quickly um, by just showing movement, as opposed to uh, as opposed to having to actually go through an attack. It's it kind of walks, it kind of blows blows that regiment away. And again, as we um, as we're looking to bypass. I'm going to utilize this motorized uh, division and I'm going to drive as deep as I can into Soviet territory. So we're identifying as we drive deeper into Soviet territory um, that we've got uh, a known airfield there, we've got a, um, and, and, uh, an, an infantry division um, sitting there. So we're going to, again, attempt to bypass, I'm going to drive this headquarters, uh, regiment, or, uh, core headquarters, uh, unit up parallel to it. Um, these headquarters units provide combat support, um, they're, they have some artillery capabilities as well, they're relatively, um, modest in their combat capabilities, but in conjunction with, um, some of the other units, uh, they could be, they could be very handy. Um, for maintaining supply and combat effectiveness. This is a commando unit. It's a commando battalion. Again, in the interest of trying to drive as deep as possible into uh, Russian territory, one of the things that I am looking to do is eliminate these forward airfields. Um, some of those will be handled by, um, by the Luftwaffe, but others, you know, the, if I could drive them out, um, all the better. So I'm going to run um, this SS Panzer uh, division up here and launch it into um, that particular infantry division. Start pushing uh, the infantry back. We have a uh, bridge engineers here. I'm gonna take a look. We're gonna potentially need them up on this river. We're gonna have some uh, some need to repair bridges as we go across um, in some of these areas. Engineers come in handy to rebuild uh, railroads. You can see as we're, go as we're driving in, these rail uh, railroads are being destroyed. They do come in handy for uh, reinforcement later. So we're going to uh, kind of keep a, keep an eye on where our, where our bridging uh, assets are, but in the meantime, I'm going to drive uh, that you know, commando battalion up there and occupy the airfield, taking that airfield out of service. I'm going to drive that 
KVD Regiment is now captured by um, that division forward. Then we've got another uh, commando battalion. I'm going to drive that commando battalion. Um, we look to cut off um, these troops here and drive up to Vega. to drive that core headquarters through. We've got the... Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at what we've got from the combat affecting us. Got to, got to move that as a group. And the underpin here is a SS Panzer Regiment. The strike. We're able to knock that out. Move that regiment to the back side there. left in this group here. Let's take a look. Okay, it's mostly support. Let me move this uh, division up. Should be able to knock that guy out there. That surrounds that division. Um, that division's not going to need all of this to take it out. We've got one relatively weak division and about five, six um, German divisions. So I'm going to move this German division on. Get some armored engineers here. They've got high mobility and they're also going to be able to help with the uh, Mobility, counter mobility operations. So I'm going to move those forward as well. Let me do an attack here and see if we can wipe them out. Good. We've gotten that taken care of. Going to move the, these other divisions then that were sitting there forward. We've obviously shocked the Soviets because we're not having to go through planned attacks. Um, and you'll see that when, when it occurs, but essentially. It's defaulting. Um, it's defaulting these as an overwhelming victory and wiping out these, uh, wiping out these units as we move. basically opened the road um, so we're gonna 
since the initial border troops up here, we, we're just going to move these as a group forward. Here's a plan attack. So we're going to go with an all-units attack on this surrounded uh, set of divisions here. It's a relatively um, robust set of Soviet troops. Got a couple armored divisions, uh, infantry division. We're attacking with um, a couple SS Panzer divisions, uh, an anti-aircraft unit, which would be useful for anti-tank purposes. Um, Germans had exceptional um, anti-tank capabilities um, with their anti-aircraft. Uh, and the aircraft uh, weapon is the 88. Um, it was a phenomenal, um, phenomenal system. We continue to run these guys up toward Leningrad, which is uh, one of our key objectives for the early phase. If you're going to move them, um, it's easy to get them on a train and actually run, kind of run, run it, uh, this doesn't seem to be letting me do that, um, to kind of run, run the rails, so to speak, so that you're not utilizing as much uh, in the way of resources. This is one of the MP units that we're going to use for a mop up here. You'll see if we can't get that uh, this this group here um, taken care of in this next uh, this next round, we're going to bypass allow the uh, MPs and some of these rear, rear units to clean up and uh, go from there. So now that we're down, take a look at the middle uh, section. We've already kind of started moving deep. Again, we're going to do the same thing here. You've got some very um, modest um, troop concentrations. So with some SS Panzer. So I'm going to run this SS Panzer division up and, and attempt to cut off this entire um, group with this uh, with this set of SS troops. Again, as we're looking at the, the troop strength we've got here, in a lot of cases, these um, unprepared Soviet troops are just getting overwhelmed by um, rear uh soldiers right out the gate. They didn't expect this coming. Um, even though Stalin was warned over and over again that you know an uh, invasion was imminent, um, he didn't believe it. Um, and so as a result, they ended up being woefully unprepared. Um, and what you're seeing here is a reflection of that. Essentially, we're moving right now to uh, completely cut off what looks to be about a core strength um, set of units um, here, which will reduce. And in the meantime, uh, start driving driving this set of, uh, of troops toward, um, toward Moscow. Okay, 
the biggest concern that you know we would have as the access is we are heavily dependent upon motorized and mechanized uh, armored type uh, units. These units, as soon as you start getting into fall, winter, and spring, um, you know, fall it might be okay. You get in the, the kind of early winter, everything turns to mud. And once it freezes over, you're kind of okay for a while, although depending on how cold it is, your diesel may gel, your, your tanks might not work. Um, and then once you get into spring, it's all just mud again. So you know, one of the challenges we face here is how much hay can we make before um, the weather goes completely um, back in a handbasket and we're unable to um, we're unable to actually achieve our objectives because the weather becomes the enemy. So we're going to work at reducing this entire um, pocket. Our goal is to not allow a lot of room um, in the in the front, so that we we don't end up getting cut off in the process. And we're going to hang up here. these MPs, MP divisions to, uh, to mop up after this initial attack and we'll start driving these uh, motorized uh, Panzer units forward. You can see these guys are coming out of Warsaw. So this is part of uh, what, was, what was Poland is now occupied. Um, it's now part of Germany. One of the keys in operational art of war is to maintain decent supply lines. And you can see once we start cutting these guys off, they're gonna, their supply lines come all the way over here from the west. Um, ours are you know, kind of these supply points here, or all the way over here in the east. Our supply points are over here in the west. Um, we've got um, a number of, of uh, those that I do not want to have troops get too far out in front of um, because otherwise we're going to end up with a significant problem. Let me just see what we've done. We haven't done anything here yet. This is what happens with these large game plays. Um, it's, tough to, it's tough to kind of stay on top of what you've done and what you haven't. Um, up there and I'll get these guys cut off. Let's see if I've got somebody here I can move into that bridge. It may not be the case. I'd love to get somebody over to uh, cut cut off that retreat. In the meantime, we're going to drive, again, start driving these guys deep, hopefully drive uh, drive some of those aircraft out of, out of range for ground support. And again, one of our other goals is to both capture um, and then um, potentially utilize uh, Russian airfields as well.
I can see that we're driving these guys into the marsh. This is this is a tough, tough, tough spot to have to fight. Um, Pure Prep Marsh is um, used to mark the border with uh, Poland and Russia. And you know, on the other side, trying to kind of clear that marsh and get around that marsh is uh, it's going to be a pretty critical, um, pretty critical objective. Some of being able to do that will be trying to cut off um, these Russian troops from retreating into the marsh. Um, I've got you know, not some suboptimal um, troop mix down here with, uh, with Panzers. We're gonna okay. move up some reinforcements here. This area is actually a much stronger um, initial front uh, defense than what you saw up in the former Poland. Uh, however, the uh, the goal here remains the same, which is you know can we can we drive in and surround these troops before they have a chance to uh, figure out what's going on, and if so. Can we prevent um, reinforcements accordingly? So uh, we've got um, but the the Russian uh, setup here is far more effective, um, at least in you know having supporting um, supporting units, having um, you know. A, a difficulty of being able to um, difficulty in being able to uh, get a clear, a clean breakthrough. some Russian cavalry here. It's not going to be all that useful against German infantry. Um, you know, the, the Russians were just woefully unprepared um, for this attack, even though they knew it, you know, they had been warned and warned and warned what was coming. Um, combination of both uh, shortage of equipment and material, as well as just readiness, generally. The, uh, the Russians took them about um, 90 days to 120 days to really come to grips with what had happened. <coughs> A combination of um, the Russians kind of figuring it out and getting uh, getting their act together, coupled with uh, the great defender of Russia over time, the Russian winner. Um, managed to get the uh, managed to get the Russians back on their back on their feet 
um, be able to hold off the Germans and uh, kind of drive that uh, drive that to success, you know, as, as the winter kind of rolled in. So we've managed to kind of to, to drive through this area around the Pure Pet Marsh. The one area that, you know, that would woefully um, unprepared on both sides um, was the southern front. You've got uh, you've got these troops here. Um, so you've got Hungarians, you've got Romanians, you've got some Germans who are not ready to go um, here at the beginning. And, you know, you're trying to drive out this direction to, uh, to take on the, the uh, oil fields to the, to the west or to the east. You kind of want to drive through, grab the oil fields, grab these warm water ports. And, you know, the, the, uh, the other allies of the Germans, beyond the Germans themselves, with the exception of the Slovak, really didn't do themselves, uh, were, not, were not all that effective on the, on the Eastern Front generally, um, and as a result caused um, almost as many problems as they, as they saw um, when they were counted on by the Germans. So now we're going to go ahead and resolve any of the outstanding attacks. So it's going through now, and you can see that it's uh, running through the running through the uh, the air war. You can kind of see the air war as as it's going up. They've lost a lost a fair number of uh, lost a fair number of uh, planes here. As it goes through, it'll give us the the breakdown of what the losses were. So Axis losses 12%, 1% Soviets. Sixty-two percent Soviet losses, three percent um, Axis losses. Again, our goal at this point is to take advantage of the shock um, and try and drive as deep as we can, as fast as we can, and then kind of work on a recover. So you can see when uh, when, when you have a uh, battle, as it'll show you what the losses were. In this particular case, you have know, 32% losses on on the uh, Soviet side. Essentially zero percent losses um, on the on the German side, on the Axis side. You can see what the breakout is of uh, what was lost on the um, and what was engaged on the German side here and on the uh, Soviet side here. You can see that there was you know, significant losses. However, there was plenty of replacements. So again, that's a, the biggest challenge with uh, any invasion of the Soviet Union, which is which is you know, or Russia, which has never been successful um, outside of the Mongols, is you've got a lot of you've got a lot of area to cover. You can see now that these guys are entrenched, so that really indicates that they these guys have dug in, um, which is going to make them again a little bit more difficult to get out. F is fortified, so we've got um, some of the Soviets have already started digging into their positions, um, which makes it difficult to get them out of those positions. And this is one of our major attacks here. We did not achieve the goal that I wanted to achieve, which was knocking these guys out of the city. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get on that, but and I've got some of those, but I've got some armor tied up here. Um, and that's going to be problematic as we kind of go down the road. We now have those couple of divisions. Um, we have these couple, these couple divisions are now uh, surrounded. And that's the goal at this point is to try and take out as much of the Soviet army as we can in place.
seeing you know two three percent versus you know thirty plus percent losses. However, um, the challenge we run into, of course, is as we continue to move east, our supply lines get longer and longer and longer, and you can see that as we're moving east, the roads and uh, rail are becoming more and more uh, destroyed. Well, the Soviet um, supply lines become shorter and shorter and shorter as they draw supplies from the Urals, and um, they continue to be able to push, um, push troops forward over shorter distances while we're going to be pulling our troops all the way from, um, from this western edge of the map over toward Moscow. So the, the, more, the more we can knock out now, the better. Um, we do have a couple of uh, cavalry regiment, a couple of divisions down here that are in, looking like they're in a world of hurt. Again, trying to get the, uh, there we go. You can see we saw, you know, 100%, 100% losses there. Um, yeah, it was a fair, fair number of, of, you know, mortars and, and 335 plus rifle squads. So, I mean, that, that was a, that was a good win. Now, what I expect is we're going to go through these initial attacks. And in this first round, because we've been able to take such a um, combination of shock and uh, supply, the, the game takes a look at your troop readiness, takes a look at your supply, um, takes a look at how many moves you've made, kind of how, how worn your units are. And you may get a second, a third, a fourth round of attacks that you can execute. Um, so, you know, I anticipate that in this first, um, kind of first set, we're going to have a second round. So we were able to kind of knock out that, that crew there, um, with those SS troops. That was a, you know, probably an entire Soviet Corps, um, that, that suffered those losses. That infantry division just got busted down into three um, regiments. That's what happens when, um, kind of when the unit starts to fall apart. Uh, literally, you lose command and control at the divisional level. It breaks it down. Um, the game will break them down into smaller units. Uh, so reduce it to you know, regiments to battalions to companies, um, divisions to regiments or brigades, and you know that reduces their combat effectiveness and you also have a limitation as to how many units you can stack in any given um, hex so it's about 10 units as your max so as you start breaking it down you can't put as many troops in that same spot and you can reconstitute those units provided that they're in um, they're not in uh, like a, a disoriented status But these initial these initial attacks have gone almost as well as expected with the exception of the attack down here, which is just not gone. I was hoping that would be able to take the city. Um, you can see that these are green, which indicate that they're pushing kind of pushing up against that you know, 10, 10 limit. And just wipe that entire division up here. So we're seeing you know, fairly good, fairly good success. Um, and some of these uh, units have been bypassed. Uh, remember, one of our main goals is Minsk. I'm driving with this uh, Panzer Division up toward Minsk. Kind of a pincer movement here. Um, and kind of move around from Minsk around the marsh and then move this way south around the marsh and then slowly push through these Panzer Divisions. Um, need to push north uh, as we as we go. So it does say I've got about 50 percent of my 50 um, percent of my turn remains. And again, this is going to be uh, this is a summary of what happens. So you can see that we suffered relatively low losses, with the exception of this uh, this uh, airfield attack here. 
Um, so let's take a look and see what we've still got left that we can do um, to uh, to some of these some of these uh, units. A lot of times, this is going to be your artillery units can continue to operate, your motorized units can continue to operate, get second, third, fourth um, shots um, or uh, attacks. So, you know, in this particular case, just doesn't look like we've got much that we can do here. Not a lot of movement. Doesn't look like I've got much I can do up in the north here. Let's see what we got down here. So I can do another attack, and we're going to attack, um, attack that location. I'm going to do a uh, bombardment on the airfield and see if we can uh, see if we can knock a couple planes out on the ground. Again, we'll. Take advantage where we can of, uh, of some of the, the attack opportunities that might remain. See if we can knock out a few more of these guys um, before, the next, before the next turn. So let's just do... Uh, Artillery bombardment there. I don't think I can take out either one of those two. Tried that once before. This looks like it should be an easy take out. Let's drive him up. Again, we want to bypass the marsh with the uh, with the armor. Um, so we've knocked that guy out. I'm going to move that uh, Panzer unit back up. Slide these guys in and have them attack. Uh, attack that. Uh, that hex gonna have these guys um, do another attack on that hex I generally will go with a limit losses um, with with limited exception um, it just it's kind of a the happy medium spot and uh on balance, it seems to be provide a, a pretty effective, um, pretty effective approach to you know, balancing losses. Just that was that was good. Let's get these guys over here. Let's see if we can get a another attack on these guys. We'll do a cutoff potentially right there. So now that we've busted through. Looks like we got a fairly heavily defended spot. We'll slide. Let's actually bypass we got some uh, artillery another panzer unit sure we've we're kind of attacking across all fronts here making sure that we've got if someone can can make an attack that they're making that attack and we've moved 
everybody as far forward as it makes sense to do so. Alright, let's resolve. Let's see how we do here. So we we did manage to destroy another couple of units just on the initial. Um, you know, as we roll through here, we're continuing to bombard uh, airfields. You can see that we've lost 19 to 22. seeing a, a fairly successful kind of opening round with the exception of that one spot up uh, up in the north there I, mean, I was hoping they would have taken these guys out they haven't gotten taken out does look like with the weakness that we're seeing out of the Hungarians and Romanians that I'm likely to have to rely on a push south of the marsh um, from the north west as opposed to uh, from the south west um, for the capture of the busted through a few of those spots, but I've got to push um, these panzers as deep as possible now that we've kind of broken through this line and allow the infantry to mop up. Um, but these motorized units, we've got to drive those deep. Um, and we're starting to see the Soviets down here in the south have a fairly well-established line already. Um, these guys are already entrenched. And as a result, you know, because they've got that relatively entrenched line, it's going to be very difficult for us to bust through it and operate in those surrounding pincer movements. Here we've now wiped out that. Uh, uh, this is a uh, spot that I'm really not happy with the um, success level. It says we've got 40% of our turn remaining. I'm not quite sure what we're going to be able to do here. Let me see if I can move any of these guys into the city um, to get get the uh, get that um, that unit surrounded. I 
think this is going to be a tough one. Let's just drive on, baby. It's given me a fair number of uh, additional attacks, which I was not expecting. I figured we had fairly well run those um, run those out of gas um, but it's it looks like uh, looks like we've got some got some success here which is which is good we're going to uh, attempt to bombard those guys again Folding like a Kmart deck chair. Opportunities, but that was a nice, uh, unexpected third round where we were able to make some real hay, especially down here in the uh, south center. All right, let's wrap it. This area here is not gone as planned. We should have been kind of rolling up into, into that uh, area by right now. Most of our units are so tired at this point um, on the initial move that we to forward. Causing a lot of casualties when not able to occupy uh, the way I would have hoped.
example, the Russians were famous for having a significant amount of our field artillery. They were, uh, even to today, um, Russian slash Soviet uh, tactics relies heavily on uh, field artillery as a as a core um, core tactical uh, strength of their of their units, um, and they they build a lot around. Field artillery's ability to be able to uh, impact significantly the, the, the field of battle. And just seeing if we've got anything left here. Any. Any gas in the tank. Once we get past this first round, it gets tougher and tougher and tougher. And I was happy to see that we busted, busted in here. see some of these rivers are so thick that we're not able to move, um, not able to move uh, armor across them without uh, bridging assets. And it's going to be important for us to make sure we keep those bridging assets forward. I think we're, I think we're all set up here. I don't think there's anything left. All right, let's try one more. One more round. I expect that we'll see the uh, the Finns come in soon, as well as the Hungarians and the uh, and the Romanians. One of the things that the gameplay does is it attempts to um, to consider what would be a um, historical political element as well. So if the Germans see significant um, success, then you'll see some of these uh, some of these folks like the Hungarians who have come in on the side of the Germans. If you see if you see a lack of success, then they may not come in on the side of the Germans. And so you want to be able again in order to be able to access um, access the, the troops and access the uh, Knows about even, even the losses here, um, so we know the advantages. Um, that's going to be one of the challenges that you know, you face is really going. Okay, can we get? Um, can we make enough? Can we have enough success early so that um, we can drive some of these uh, some of these potential allies into the into the fight? And you know, bring a couple of dozen divisions um, to play. Okay, we've now occupied the city. We now have that um, that core surrounded. That has just been way more work than it should have been. And that failed proficiency check. No surprise there. We're we're tired. So we're now going to run through the Soviet side, and then we're going to wrap this uh, initial turn. So the Soviets are going to um, launch their defense here. So under this scenario, um, because I have the fog of war turned on. I don't know what the Soviets are doing outside of those areas where I may have either air cover, <coughs> where I may have troops kind of across a across a 
you know, across from them so I can see what they're up to. But otherwise, I don't know what the, I don't know what's happening back here. So my suspicion, however, is that we're going to see the Soviets start to build um, a defense here at the Stalin line. And also start to build a defense back toward Moscow. And, you know, kind of fight us in a defense in depth as we move um, from west to east. You can see that they're, you know, what I'm seeing here is they're pulling troops back um, and getting them out of uh, getting them out of harm's way, which is why I want to get these guys surrounded that first, um, as much as possible that first, uh, that first turn, because they will just, you know, pull these guys back and start defending Minsk, they'll start defending Smolensk, they'll start defending Kiev, they'll start defending Moscow, and I'm in a lot better shape if I can keep those guys uh, stuck up on the frontier than I am if, you know, they're pulling back like this and I end up having to, uh, to fight them when they're sitting in entrenched positions later. It becomes absolutely critical on you know, kind of these next couple rounds to get the armor um, moving in depth and attempt to uh, attempt to drive these these guys out, um, get them get them surrounded and capture a couple of, a couple of these. Uh, key objectives for kind of the early August, late July, early August objectives. And we're already seeing here, you know, some reinforcement. This had been, I think, one relatively small version of artillery here before. We're now seeing, we're now seeing that that's, you know, been reinforced with the division sitting in front of that Panzer, uh, SS Panzer division. Now, again, that's not going to be much of a, that's not going to be much of a, uh, a challenge. But, you know, it's it's more than what we saw before. But we were limited at that point with our um, mobility. So it's, you know, we drove, we drove as deep as we could. Essentially, we ran, ran ourselves as, as, uh, as far as we could in a, in a, in a three day period. So we are seeing a significant amount, you can see it up in the corner here, significant amount of Soviet, uh, Soviet movement. So we're seeing troops coming in from, um, in from the north. If you guys want to fight it out, that would be fine with me. Um, you can see that, you know, the expected strength of these uh, Soviet divisions is really weak compared to the Germans that are facing them. We are seeing mostly all, with the exception of this Panzer Division here, a couple of these guys, we're seeing all uh, generally um, green, good to go, um, strength on uh, reinforcements, on supply, ammunition, etc. As we progress, you'll see that the the air units, you know, they were really busy this last time, kind of wiping out, uh, wiping out a lot of uh, a lot of Soviet, uh, a lot of Soviet um, aircraft. You can see that, you know, we're looking at oranges, yellows, oranges, which means they're kind of running low on supply, low on strength. They're getting tired. Um, you know, you can see that they're coming and hitting us with, um, they're kind of hitting us back on, on some of the air losses. Or excuse me, this is the Soviets. So, you know, they're continuing to, they're continuing to see significant air loss. Like you forgetting when it says hours, it's flipped over to the Soviet side. One of the challenges with one of these large scenarios, obviously, is you have a, uh, significant amount of time for the turns. We're running you know, well over an hour already and you know have to get this want to see what the kind of what the final resolution is here. I anticipate we're not going to see a lot of Soviet counterattacks. Um, I think they're gonna you know be moving their troops back for a defense in depth um, to try and you know have an attrition 
as we're moving forward, they're going to be doing a fighting withdrawal, kind of throwing lines of defense up. As we bust through that line, they'll give us a little bit of room. Um, but we'll have to reduce and capture those troops um, or bypass, and then there'll be another defense line set up. And um, there's a few spots on the map, like where the Stalin line is here, up near Moscow, where you can see historically how that has worked. And it's been a, you know, a and I think the Soviets, <coughs> even in gameplay here, are doing the exact same thing. So now we're. They had no counterattacks. We're now um, getting reinforcements, and uh, that ends uh, turn one. <laughs>